So let's talk about how people hear. It all starts with a sound source, in this case, a bell. The bell makes a sound wave that travels through the air until it meets the ear on either side of your head called the pinna. It's the pinna's job to collect the sounds and funnel them into your ear canal. The sound waves travel down the ear canal until they meet up with your eardrum. What do the sound waves do to your eardrum? That's right, they make it vibrate. Those good vibrations are transmitted through the smallest bones in your body to this portion of the ear called the cochlea. The cochlea, or organ of hearing, is a snail-shaped organ filled with fluid and is lined with thousands of tiny rows of hair cells or nerves. Each hair cell responds to certain sound frequencies and sends nerve impulses to the brain where they are interpreted as sounds. This area of the cochlea responds to high-frequency sounds. This area here is responsible for mid-frequency. And finally, this area of the cochlea responds to low-frequency sounds. So, when a particular row of hair cells becomes stimulated by the sound it is responsible for, it fires off an electrical signal to the brain, and the brain interprets the sound. So sound goes from acoustic energy to mechanical energy to hydraulic energy and finally to electric energy where your brain interprets it. This is an amazing process and it all happens this fast. So here is what a healthy cochlea looks like on the inside. You can see that the little hair cells are lined all the way from the opening up to the top. Here is an unhealthy cochlea. Do you see anything that's missing? If you were missing these hair cells, you would have tremendous difficulty understanding women's voices or little children. Frankly, anyone who speaks soft or has a higher frequency voice. You would often say that you can hear people talking but can't understand what they are saying. You would have great difficulty understanding speech in groups, crowds, and background noise. People might say you listen to the TV too loud or occasionally miss the telephone ringing. Hearing loss like this is actually called nerve damage. Nine out of ten patients have this type of hearing loss, which is very correctable. Ten percent of our patients have something called nerve deafness, which is very challenging to correct with traditional hearing aids. Think of your cochlea like a piano. If you were to roll the cochlea out flat, you would have rows of hair cells going from low frequency to high frequency, just like the keys of a piano. Nerve deafness would be like having a piano that is missing the strings or keys and no sounds can be played anymore. Nerve damage is different. It's more like having a piano that's out of tune. The piano or cochlea still has all the keys and strings that can send sounds to the brain, but it just needs a bit of tuning and an increase in volume at certain frequencies. So when a hearing specialist from My Hearing Centers tests your hearing, they measure it from low frequency to high frequency, at volume levels from soft to loud. Then the specialist compares your hearing to what is considered normal. In one of the tests, the specialist will determine the volume level at which you begin to perceive sounds at different frequencies. If any of your test scores fall below this line, it would be considered hearing loss, ranging from mild to profound. This green line represents where the vast majority of people begin to hear sounds. This red line is the most common form of hearing loss called a high-frequency hearing loss or ski slope hearing loss. Take for example this high frequency. Someone with normal hearing would begin to hear this sound at 10 decibels while this person with high frequency loss would not begin to hear the same sound until it reached 80 decibels of volume. The person with hearing loss needs to hear the sound 70 decibels louder just to begin to perceive the sound. If you're over the age of 55, you should have your hearing tested every year. Not because it's getting better, but because it's typically on a slow decline. Even if you think you hear well, it's a good idea to get tested so as to establish a baseline. Then you can compare your hearing year over year to see if there have been any changes. I encourage you to get your hearing tested at My Hearing Centers annually. They offer the testing for free in all locations and through a network of colleagues virtually anywhere in the country. 
You can take advantage of this service by clicking the Schedule an Appointment link on this website and their helpful staff will contact you to schedule your no-cost exam. But there is more to your hearing than just hearing. There is an equally important part called understanding. How do hearing and understanding function together? Click on Segment 3 to learn how.